That was a great 11. So we're going on to, we're still busy with a graph of E and Lynn, but we're moving on to the graph of Lynn. Um, so here it is over here. Now, I want you to notice the relationship between these two, the E to the X and the Lynn to the X. If you have a look here, it was going through one on the Y axis. It is now going through one on the X axis. Uh, its characteristic point for E was 1 and 2.718. And this one's characteristic point now is 2.718 when x is that value and 1. So what has happened here is your e graph has been reflected about this line y is equal to x. So this lin is a mirror image of e to the x about the line y is equal to x. Uh, that is because they are inverses. Okay, so that's the relationship between e and lin. Characteristic point was 1, 2.718. Characteristic point, 2.718 and 1. Obviously, I've rounded this off. Um, e is an irrational number, so it would just carry on. I've just rounded it off just for simplicity. Okay, so if we go through the examples now, the first one is they're asking us to plot lin x. So going back to this, your one characteristic point is 1. And your other one is going to be 2.718 and 1. So 2.718 is there and 1. Also, what I want you to notice here is uh, your asymptote here for E was your x-axis. So the asymptote for Lin is your y-axis. So it will come very close to your y-axis and then shoot off. And that's what it does here. Come very close to your y-axis, through that point, through that point, and then shoot off. Okay, so that is f of x. Now we need to label this point here. So this point is 2.718 and 1. Okay, now this minus 1, just like with your e graph over here, the minus 1, you remember what it did? It shifted it down. Okay, so if we shift it down for the e, it's going to affect the asymptote. But now with this lin graph, if we move this thing down, it's not going to really affect the asymptote because the asymptote is this line over here your y-axis and if we move it down we're not affecting it we'll only affect it if we move it left or right okay so what i want you to do for this one is just take your two characteristic points over here so we have that one at zero it's now moving down by one so at zero it will move down by one so it's now going to go minus one this one was at 1 at 2.718. It was at 1. It's now going to go down to 0 because we're moving it down by 1 unit. So here's our graph here going through this point, through this point, and then shooting off. Label your graph f of x. And then what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to label this point over here. So this is going to be 2.718 and 0. All right, going on to example C. So with this one over here, we're going to take two times whatever our characteristic value is, plus one to it, okay? So when I do this, grade 11, so I'm not substituting for x. I'm substituting for the whole of lin x. And we always come back to our original one. So over here, uh, or for, we're going to be substituting for our y value here, so it's zero. So two times zero, is zero because i'm looking at this point over here plus one is one so at this point now it's going to go up to one okay now at this point here 2.718 it was one our y value is one so two times one is two plus one is three so at 2.718 which is over here it's now going to go up to three all right so we've doubled it plus one and again, this has not affected our asymptote in any way. So it comes very close to our y-axis. It'll go through this point, through that point, and then shoot off. So this is f of x. And what I'm going to do is just label this point here. So this is 2.718 and 3. Okay. Now, grade 11s, this one here. All these other examples, we've either moved it up or down with that plus one at the end there. When the plus or the minus is with your 
your variable, just like what we did with the E graph, as you saw here. It's going to move it left or right, okay? So this one is gonna move it to the left, and now how do I know that? Because you always take what's ever in here with the x. x plus one, set it equal to zero, and you get x is equal to minus one. So that is now a shift to the left by one unit. And now because we're moving this thing left or right, we're going to be changing the asymptote. So now originally the asymptote was your y-axis. Your asymptote for this one now is going to be minus one. So I draw in my asymptote and then I label it. X is equal to minus one. Now, the best way to do this, um, grade 11s, is just substitute in for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say minus lin, and I'm just gonna see what zero gives us. So we got zero plus one, and we get zero. So that point will be zero. Then I'm just going to choose another point, and let's just say we put in two. So now I'm gonna put two in here, and we get minus 1.09, so it's just over here, okay. And uh, what happened here is you can see because we've got this negative in the front here, it is now going to flip our graph. So if we take the original one, it's going to flip it like this. So we now know that this arm here is now gonna start up here, it's gonna come up here, it's gonna go through your zero point, through this point over here, and then shoot off like that. Okay, and that is f of x. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to label this point here. So this point here is two, and you remember we got the point over here, which is minus one point. So I'm just gonna round it off to three decimals, zero, nine, nine. All right, grade 11, homework. So for this one, what you can do is you can do the second part over here. Number two, your Lynn graphs. Okay, thanks guys.